Thank you, HGCSE English Literature Predicted Papers are live and ready to go thanks to our amazing English teacher, Beth. They come with a free video walkthrough featuring grade nine essays and detailed analysis, which means you'll see exactly how to interpret the questions and structure your answers to maximise your marks. These papers are excellent for practice, but remember that they are just predictions, so make sure you still revise in a way that means you've got a range of characters and themes covered for your texts. Also, most importantly, don't forget to look after your mental health during revision season. Your well-being matters more than any grade, so be sure to take time for yourself. Now, just to be clear, our papers only offer Macbeth or Romeo and Juliet and A Christmas Carol or Jekyll and Hyde for Paper 1 and an Inspectacles or Blood Brothers and Power and Conflict or Love and Relationships for Paper 2, along with, of course, the Unseen Poetry Practice as well. I'm really sorry if we've not covered your text this year. Now for this video, I'm going to break down paper one and then provide the predictions. Do use the timestamps for what exactly you're after. So for AQA GCSE English Literature paper one, which covers Shakespeare and the 19th century novel, the total exam time is one hour and 45 minutes. There are 64 marks available and this paper makes up 40% of your GCSE English Literature grade. In section A, you will answer one question on the Shakespeare play you've studied, such as Macbeth or Romeo and Juliet. You'll be given an extract from the play and the question will ask you to analyse the extract and also relate it to the whole play. An example question might be something like starting with this extract, explore how Shakespeare presents ambition in Macbeth. The recommended time for this section is 50-ish minutes. It's advised to spend about 10 minutes planning your response and the remainder writing your essay. Make sure you use quotes from both the extract and the rest of the play. Section B focuses on the 19th century novel you studied, such as A Christmas Carol or Jekyll and Hyde, like we say. Again, you'll be given an extract and asked to relate your answer to the whole text. An example question could be something like, starting with this extract, explore how Dickens presents Scrooge's attitudes to poverty. The recommended time for this section is 50 minutes as well. The structure for your answer should be the same. Focus first on the extract and then zoom out to the whole text thinking carefully about character, themes, context, language, and structure where relevant. Top tips for success include planning before you start writing, linking your ideas back to the question throughout your essay, including context where relevant, using a range of quotes, even short ones, and managing your time carefully to stay calm and focused. My biggest suggestion would be to try to write the essay in order of how things occur in the plot, because examiners in the examiner's reports have often said that these perform strongly. So even if your extract is from the middle of the text, for example, you can just use that for the middle of your essay. Okay, so let's talk about paper one predictions then, starting with Macbeth. Now with Macbeth, we suggest brushing up on guilt. It's a really important theme in the play and exam questions might ask you to explore how it affects characters or how it can be dangerous or destructive. When you're tackling this kind of question, start by thinking about how Shakespeare shows guilt through characters' language and behaviour, especially in moments where they begin to lose control. In the essay, you could focus on Lady Macbeth and how her speech and actions reflect the psychological toll of her guilt. And of course, also look at how Macbeth is haunted by guilt after Duncan's murder through hallucinations like the Bloody Dagger and Banquo's ghost and how this gradually leads him to paranoia, violence and emotional isolation. You can even explore how, guilt, how guilty thoughts aren't even enough to stop him from acting in the moments leading up to the murder of Duncan too. For a more advanced interpretation, you might also explore Panquo. While he doesn't act on his ambitions, Shakespeare hints at his inner conflict and guilty thoughts in moments where he admits that he dreams of the witches. This shows that guilt isn't just tied to action, it can be linked to dark desires, and Shakespeare uses it to show that even the most honourable characters wrestle with moral temptation. So when you're writing about guilt, don't just uh, kind of talk about what characters do, but how it slowly unravels them from the inside. I will say as well that by revising such a major theme like this, it will allow you to prepare for other themes too, like fears, honourable characters like Banquo, power and strength in characters and violence too. So do try to be smart in your revision and try to revise moments and quotations that fall into lots of different categories. 
Okay, next up we have Romeo and Juliet. So for us, we're thinking conflict or sort of conflict of loyalty might come up. Conflict is, of course, one of the driving forces in Romeo and Juliet, and it doesn't just come from the violent feud between the Montagues and Capulets. It also plays out on a deeply personal level, especially through things like loyalty. Juliet's story is a powerful example of how loyalty can create in a conflict. She's torn between her love for Romeo and her duty to her family, especially after Romeo kills Tybalt. In scenes like in Act 3, Scene 5, Shakespeare uses her language, full of contradictions and emotional swings, to show how this conflict overwhelms her. But this isn't just about Juliet. Loyalty causes tension for many characters. Romeo chooses love over family honour. The nurse remains loyal to Juliet as she secretly supports the lovers. And Friar Lawrence tries to stay loyal to peace, even as he helps to deceive others. Still, Juliet's experience brings out the most intense conflict of loyalty because she's forced to choose between the people she loves and the expectations placed on her. And that emotional struggle becomes more destructive as the play goes on. So when you're thinking about loyalty and conflict, look at how Shakespeare doesn't just show arguments and battles. He shows how divided loyalties can tear someone apart from the inside. So essentially, if a question features conflict, you can, of course, talk about violent conflict and this idea of internal conflict too. And if it's more about loyalty, there's lots to focus on there as well. I will say again that by revising major themes, it will allow you to prepare for other themes too. So think conflict, think fate, think love and so on. Right, we're now moving on to the 19th century novel. Let's start with A Christmas Carol. So for this novella, we're thinking something to do with generosity or charity. Generosity is one of the key themes in A Christmas Carol, and it's central to Scrooge's transformation throughout the novella. If you get a question on generosity, you'd want to think about how Dickens contrasts selfishness with kindness to highlight what truly matters at Christmas and in life as a whole. At the start, Scrooge is the opposite of generous. He hoards money, he rejects charity, and even resents giving his clerk the day off. But as the story unfolds, Dickens uses the visits from the three spirits to confront him with the consequences of his avarice. We also, of course, have characters like Fred, who warmly invites Scrooge to dinner despite rejection, or the Cratchits, who remain kind and loving even in poverty. And you can ultimately argue that Dickens shows how generosity isn't about wealth, it's about attitude and compassion. There's also an emotional conflict at play, and I think higher level responses might touch on this, that Scrooge must wrestle with his fear of change and vulnerability before he can open himself up to generosity. By the end, he's transformed not just giving money, but time, warmth and human connection. So when exploring generosity, you can try to focus on how Dickens presents it as a moral force that contrasts sharply with selfishness and how generosity involves overcoming internal conflict and embracing empathy and kindness. Again, by revising a theme like this, you can cover lots of bases like greed, redemption, the kindness of other characters and the impact of the supernatural. Just be sure to cover as much as you can in terms of revision. Okay, our last prediction for paper one is The Strange Case of Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde. Now, here we're thinking about something to do with violence. Violence, again, is a powerful theme in Jekyll and Hyde, and it's often used by Stevenson to explore darker ideas about human nature, repression, reputations and duality. If a question on violence comes up, it's not just about describing brutal events, it's about understanding what that violence represents. Hyde is the key figure here. His actions from trampling the girl to murdering Sir Danvers Carew are shocking in their lack of motive or emotion. Stevenson doesn't give us detailed gore. He uses reactions from other characters to show how unnatural and terrifying Hyde's violence is. It's also important to think about the contrast between Jekyll's respectable, controlled persona and the raw violence Hyde unleashes. This links to Victorian fears about what lies beneath the surface of civilization. Even the language Stevenson uses to describe Hyde as violent and animalistic, showing how close to savagery he is. More broadly, violence in the novella often feels sudden and uncontrollable, reflecting the dangers of suppressing one's true instincts. So when you're writing about violence for higher marks, go beyond the events themselves. Focus on how Stevenson uses violent moments to expose the hidden, darker side of human nature and the consequences of denying it. As always, this is a major theme, so by revising it, even if it's not exactly on violence, by revising it cleverly, you can also touch on themes like humanity, morality and repression, like I said before. 
Overall, a clever revision of themes is crucial here. Okay then, those are our predictions for AQA GCSE English Literature Paper 1. As I said, try to be smart with your revision of themes to really ensure a broad coverage of quotations that will work for lots of different essay types. Best of luck with Paper 1 and our Paper 2 video will of course be coming soon.